Good evening. Welcome to the Nakuru Governorship Debate here at the Edgerton University main campus in Joro, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. I am now out here of KT News, and for the next one and a half hours, I'll be moderating this governorship debate featuring four of the men who want to be governor of Nakuru County after the election of August the 8th. I will introduce them in the order of a ballot conducted just a moment ago. But first, I'd like to tell our viewers and the audience that we have agreed, the audience here have agreed to keep silent throughout the uh, proceedings here, the debate. There will be no jeering, no cheering, and no clapping, except at this very moment, as we welcome the men who want to be governor of Nakuru County. In order of the ballot conducted just a, a moment ago, please welcome first on stage already seated Senator Paul Njoroge, who wants to be governor on a county canoe ticket. <laughs> Second in that order of ballot is Mr. Peter Koros, who wants to be governor on Chama Chama Shinani ticket. Third, in order of the ballot, is independent candidate Mr. John Mututo. Please welcome him to the stage. <laughs> and finally for the debate tonight is Jubilee candidate Mr. Lee Kinyanjui. Please welcome him. <laughs> we will all please stand now for the national anthem. Thank you all. You may be seated except for three of the candidates. Now we have divided this debate into four segments of 25 minutes each, roughly. But there will be an introductory session where each candidate will get 90 seconds to introduce himself to the audience here and to our viewers on KTA News. And also to tell us what main agenda they are running on or what they stand for in this election. After that, we will move into the first of the four segments. And also in this introductory session, we will go by the order of the ballot, which is the order we will follow throughout this debate. The candidates will get two minutes to respond to each debate question from me. And if you exceed the time allotted of two minutes, you will hear this sound. That will be an indicator that your time is up and we need to move on to the next segment. After answering the debate question, there may be 30 seconds of rebuttal answer. 
And one minute, in case there is a follow-up question, that is one minute for each candidate or the uh, targeted candidate to respond in case there is a follow-up question. And we will begin now with the introductions. We start with you, Senator Paul Njoroge. In 90 seconds, please tell us who you are and what you are standing for in this election. Uh, my name's uh, Senator Paul Njoroge Ben, a uh, nominated senator, actually. Um, and uh, I am running for the gubernatorial seat. Uh, that's why I'm here today, or rather tonight. Um, and my objective is to work hand in hand with the common monoinchi in order to uplift the living standard of the people of Nakuru County. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Next, Mr. Peter Koros, in 90 seconds, kindly tell us and your supporters and our viewers who you are and what you stand for in this election for Nakuru Governor. Thank you. My name is Dr. Peter Koros, gubernatorial candidate for Nakuru County 2017 and uh, Chama Chama Shinane, which is inside NASA. I am a scholar. My first degree was in maths and economics. My second degree is in economics and planning. And my third degree and final is in economics. I stand for the gubernatorial position the year 2017, August, on the premise of all inclusivity, integrity, good governance, and ensuring that devolution reaches its ultimate goal. I'm here today, ladies and gentlemen, to say that devolution must be felt in this country, and it must be exercised to the grassroots. That's what I stand for. I also stand for integrity of leadership. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, we come to you, Honorable Mututo. Uh, my name is Honorable John Mututo. I am here as a gubernatorial candidate. I stand for social transformation and economic empowerment. What do I mean? If you tonight were to come across a chokora and you give him a thousand shillings, chances are he's going to get a new stock of guru. But should you first of all transform him, train him, treat him, a thousand shillings, given under the same circumstances, he would end up maybe trading with some bananas. That's the very baseline of social transformation. And then you do economic empowerment. That's all I stand for, and that's why I'm running as Governor Nakuru. Now, our viewers may not be aware, some in the audience may be aware, that Honorable Mutrudo and Mr. Peter Kuros enjoy a sort of a home advantage here at Edgerton, having been students here, yeah, yeah. but I hope that will not disadvantage the, the other two opponents of yours. Uh, next is you, Honorable Lee Kinunjui. Uh, thank you. I welcome the opportunity to be here today. And uh, my name is Lee Kinunjui. I have studied my first degrees in education from Kenyatta University. Second degree is in Business Administration, University of Nairobi and still in the same university, I'm doing international relations. I've been an elected member of parliament in Akuru, assistant minister for roads, and also the chairman of the National Transport and Safety Authority. I'm also part of the team that we midwife the new constitution, and in it, 
I knew there was a dream that counties would be the engine of growth across the country. And therefore, as we come into this, I arrived in 2013, and our simple uh, maxim is to make devolution a reality. In education, in health, in agriculture, we are saying the wealth of this county is not in Nairobi, it is right here with us. And we'll be working closely with institutions, including this institution, to be able to reach out to communities around here and make agriculture a profitable business, as has been the case in the past. Thank you, gentlemen, for your brevity and uh, your precision in responding to the introductory part. We will go then to the first of the four segments. And as we agreed, this is going to be about 25 minutes. The first segment is uh, focusing on governing Nakuru County. This basically is about uh, you gentlemen, your suitability for office and your electability. We begin with you, uh, Senator Paul Njiroge. There are those who believe that although a good politician, you are warlike. That you look very polite, but you <laughs> like fighting. So then the question is, why do you believe you are suitable to manage a county of 1.6 million hardworking Kenyans? Yeah, uh, one, let me put something straight, that I'm not a warlike person. But you see, whenever you are attacked, uh, and uh, um, an attempt to assassinate you uh, takes place, you have no choice apart from defending yourself. I never walked to someone's house, neither to someone's business, but uh, the person who actually attacked me that day as to what is being referred came to my business place. He tried to assassinate me using um, over 100 goons. It was uh, noted uh, through the media uh, when they were trying to throw stones. And because uh, apart from my walking sticks, the other weapon I had was a, was a gun. Actually, I had to scare away the goons. And at the same time, the commander of the goon, who is Polycarp Uigade. And uh, uh, again, I think everybody should thank me because I gave Polycarp Uigade a second chance to live. Because, <laughs> I mean, what would you expect when someone attacks you with over 100 goons? I think uh, you, you have no choice. Remember, I'm a physically challenged person. I cannot even run to, 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 I mean, uh, uh, to, 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 uh, I mean, to save myself. So the only thing I, I, I had, and lucky enough because uh, I'm a Christian, I would have gone to a record of having killed a human being. But uh, good to God that it never happened. Now, the other thing is, um, that is a sign of that I can be able to protect the Nakuru uh, County and its properties. <laughs> well, let me tell you. The time is up for that question, oh, but okay. I will allow you to explain a bit further by asking you this question. You say that you felt people were coming to assassinate you. The office of governor of a county like Nakuru is, quote unquote, a uh, very difficult office because you'll be dealing with members of county assembly who are very fiery. You'll be dealing with angry residents, angry uh, voters, angry contractors, and so on and so forth. Will they be safe from your gun if you are in the office as a <laughs> governor? Yeah, yeah. One of the things is that I'm a, I'm a good negotiator. That's one. And I've, I'm a very patient person. I, I, I think from that story which I've just given, it is very clear that I'm a very patient person. If it was any other human being, I think uh, things would have been worse than that. The other thing is, uh, uh, altogether, I should give a red card. I'm a no-nonsense person altogether. I, I, I think if we mean to do the work of the county, it has to be done perfect. I mean, I, I don't think I'll entertain those nonsense of uh, contractors who have been doing shoddy, uh, shoddy works. If that is what we call 
being a peaceful person, I think I'm not ready for that. The other thing is, I think uh, the MCS, uh, at least now they know whom I am. <laughs> I, 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 I think they report to work ready to work with me in, with, in that condition. I mean, they have to also to behave. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, I'll ask uh, a question on the same theme to you, Dr. Kuros, on your electability. The opponents are sitting and standing beside you are all seasoned politicians. They've been to parliament in various, uh, at various times. You've tried, but you've never made it to parliament. What makes you believe that with your academic credentials as a teacher and administrator, that you're good enough to run a county with a budget of 13 billion shillings a year? Thank you very much. As I mentioned earlier, and I want it to be very clear to all of us, I've been a lecturer for a number of years in Egerton University, where we stand today. And before that, I had an opportunity to teach in various high schools. And that way, I was not just managing things, I was managing persons, individuals, human beings. And uh, lately, I've been a finance minister in the county government of Bomet. And as much as these, uh, my colleagues are seasoned politicians, there was a time they entered into politics. And so if we go by the fact that they are seasoned politicians, then entry into politics would not be something that any new entrant would think of. My performance in Bomet, and the other thing also is, I have an edge over these uh, colleagues of mine because I'm the only candidate who has worked with the county government. I will not be asking for how to deal with the executive arm of the county government because I've done that. And as a finance minister, I controlled 5.6 billion yearly. And all that time, in the ratings of county governments in Kenya, Bomet was rated either number one, number two, or number three. While all the time, Nakuru was either number 45, 46, <laughs> or 47. I come to Nakuru with the energy, the skill, the experience that I already have. I understand the two arms of government in as far as county governments are concerned. There's those who might attack you, uh, given exactly that background of Bomet County, that although you lived and schooled in Nakuru County, you were born in Bomet and you worked in Bomet. There are those who might label you as an outsider in Nakuru County who may have nothing to offer in this election and in running the affairs of this county. What would you say to that? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I'm born in Bomet. And when you look at the audience and the Kenyans here, where they are now, they are not living where they were born. And having been born in Bomet, I never worked in Bomet until two and a half years ago when I was asked to go and offer my expertise my training, my skill and experience in the county government of Bomet. And I managed to put the county government of Bomet on the map of Kenya. Secondly, I'm not an outsider because I've lived in Nakuru since 2000. That's a space of 17 years. And anyone perceiving me or looking at me as an outsider is really not giving me the right rating as far as Nakuru citizenship is concerned. Thank you, sir. Right on the buzzer. Next, uh, we come to you, Honorable Mutudo. Most Kenyans recognize you. Some have suffered because of what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
There are those who say that some are alive because of what you've done. I'm talking about your stint at the Nakada, uh, Nakada as chairman, and also your efforts to push through the uh, so-called Mututo law to control alcohol consumption and even the times that people can drink. What in Nakada exactly do you think prepared you to be governor? Thank you very much. First of all, Nakada job as a chairman and an active chairman for that matter. And I'm in record to be the most active, not only here, but even Nakada equivalent anywhere in the planet. It's a job you don't want even your worst of the enemies to do. It's a job that makes you cut through some of the most dreaded people, the narcotics experts, the alcohol barons, and so forth and so on. There's no other fire that can test a man than to be a chairman of Nakada. 18 hours working, and at no salary, 63K per month, dedication, dedication. Particularly when you remember the last about uh, year 2009 to 2013, we have lost over 30,000 Kenyans through alcohol, direct injection. Not counting, that's central Kenya alone, not forgetting about all these others. I could talk about Nakada forever, but that sharpened me up. I want to draw you back a bit and uh, salute you for identifying me with Egypt and true. My admission number is 129 stroke 75. Beautiful distinction I got here. And after that, I was able to get in University of Nairobi, admission number, just because Matiang is watching. Admission number is 1517 <laughs> stroke 80. Then I went to Australia for postgraduate diploma and then eventually resource economics. I have had extensive protocol in my project portfolio, but I want just to mention one in public, like Garana Food Security Project, as a chairman agriculture committee. Other than stopping people who want to steal our KFA, KPCU, KCC, and all that, you remember the, the fuss in the committee that time, the sugar factories and so forth. I was also able to design with my committee in agriculture. Yes. That means your time is up, but there's a lifeline in my next question um, for you. You have, you're a man of letters, basically. You have uh, many degrees, but you also have a background at the Transport Appeals Board as chairman, um, also at NACADA. There are those who say that even in the very constituency you represented in parliament, uh, that is Naivasha, people die every other day on the roads. Uh, and the one thing they blame most, ironically, <laughs> is drunk driving. So you're touched on both ends, at transport and at Nakada. What is it that you've done at Nakada and the Transport Appeals Board that should convince Nakuru people that you're a man they can trust with the management of Nakuru Affairs? I, I start with the Appeals Board, where I was for just a few days. The work there was just to clean the mess my friend did put in NTSA through appeal system. And I spared him the agony, being a young man, that he doesn't uh, look so bad in the eyes of the public. <laughs> but in, in Naivasha, the, the alcohol problem is big. And if you look through what I did, first of all, as a member of parliament, I stopped high crime. You remember you couldn't go to Kinungi by night. They were talking about uh, six, uh, six buses per night. They were killing two beautiful ladies per month and taking some parts. They were, it was the rape capital of Kenya. I stopped all that nonsense. I was able to bring in quality in alcohol production and uses people like Keroche today produce summit, which is world class. We, we in Ivarshal are good people. It's a happy place. Naivasha produces 50% of the wild red roses every day. It's a happy place. And happiness comes from some form of environment. Yeah, two minutes are gone, but you have adversely mentioned uh, Honorable Kenyanjui. And before we ask him a question, we must give him a chance <coughs> to respond to that attack that you say he created a serious mess 
at the transport uh, <laughs> department. Honorable Kinyanjui, what is this mess that you created and okay. how did you deal with it? No, um, <laughs> well, the situation is such that at the transport ministry you have the body entrusted with the responsibility to create the policies that is the national transport and safety. When those policies are questionable, before you go to court, you're encouraged to go through the tribunal. So it is uh, just an appendage of uh, NTSA so that we can re reduce people going to court. Unfortunately, not many found reason to go there. So it's actually not been active. And uh, I don't think he's really mentioning adversely. Uh, all we know is that state institutions are there for a purpose, and they are there to reduce the traffic in court. So I think that was the purpose, only that he didn't stay there long enough to understand the role. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Kinyanjui, the manner in which you answered the question and the wording in your answer has set you up for this next question. <laughs> Many see you as a polished politician, uh, very polite, died in the wool. But as I asked uh, Senator Njoroge, you will be dealing with very difficult people, the number of members of county assemblies. You will be dealing with very difficult uh, people in the name of contractors. And also citizens who just want to demand answers from you. How will you survive? Okay, um, I agree with those who say I'm polished. But I also want to say that I've been a member of parliament in Nakuru, which is quite a stormy constituency, and we saw the best and the worst during that time. I was elected uh, uh, at the time when we had the post-election violence, so we oversaw the resettlement, the reconciliation, and all that. And at the same time, we also had the municipal council of Nakuru. So the same constituency had actually the equivalent of MCAs in a way of a municipal council. So in one way or the other, We've been able to work with these structures. I understand the terrain, and I'll be able to work with it uh, as time goes by. Allow me also to say, I don't think there are any more serious challenges that one would have dealing with national transport, where you have cartels, you have mungikis, you have people who are cartels within the industry. And uh, notwithstanding what you have said, we were able to deal with that, and I know many will appreciate the sanity we have brought into the transport sector. So I guess it's a terrain that will require both understanding and working together with the MCS. And I believe a lot of the behavior you see sometimes in the assembly is because of breakdown in communication. When there is communication, you reduce the gap between yourself and the assembly. And we have started that journey to work together, to serve the public interest, and always to remember that if you forget why you are there, you will not be there for long. And that's the principle we want to adopt. Uh, we have uh, a few minutes remaining in this segment. And I'd like to ask one round of questions, uh, hoping to get very specific answers from the candidates. I'll start with you once again, uh, Senator Njoroge, uh, about governing Nakuru County. What is the one thing? The one thing, the number one thing that you think the next governor must do once uh, he gets into office? Um, I, I think one of the things is that uh, uh, any uh, governor who will be in the office needs to do away completely with the brokers. Because remember, we, 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 we shift or we transfer um, the, the brokers we have during campaign period. And then they, they also become now the brokers uh, when, when you're already performing your duties. They come in between you and the, and the common Wananchi. So mine, as it is today, um, having that direct communication with the common Wananchi, even when I'm uh, conducting my campaigns, I do not have any broker with me. And uh, second, uh, what I'm trying to do, uh, what I'll do is to make sure that uh, I'll be coming out of the office, uh, reach the common Mwananchi. Uh, whenever we have the finances, I should let the, the, the uh, citizens of Nakuru County to know how much we have uh, in order for, them, for us to plan uh, uh, with, with the kind of uh, money we have in place. Dr. Cross, the same question. Uh, what is the one thing uh, you would do, the first thing you would do 
want to get to the office as governor of Nakuru County. Thank you very much. Now, one of the things that I, as governor of Nakuru County, would want to see happen is, first of all, to ensure that devolution is realized. <laughs> Number two, to ensure that, according to the Constitution, there is public participation in every undertaking of the county government. So that if it is in education, and there is a project that needs to be done, public participation is very key. If it is agriculture, if it is infrastructure, if it is economic development, public participation is very key. And I'll ensure that the citizens of Nakuru are involved in the day-to-day -day running of the county government. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable Mututha, what is the first thing, the biggest thing you think the next governor must do once he gets into office? Of course, everybody knows Sharia Zamutudo. The first thing is to institute rule of law. We have a lot of regulations that will immediately stop corruption, inequality, and equitable distribution of resources. That is the beginning point, rule of law and appreciating the various statutes, both at uh, devolution and, and the national government that govern the people of Nakuru, who number now currently over 2.2 million people, rule of law. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable Kinyanju. Thank you. I think um, the first and most important thing is to have a plan. Most of the counties today are working without a plan. If you have no plan on agriculture, on health, on security and agriculture, you will go nowhere. So the first thing is to be able to consult with the members of the public and have a five-year plan upon which now every year we'll be able to say where are we on agriculture, where are we on water, where are we on health. Again, our core principle is not just about wealth distribution, which has been the biggest problem in this country, because you cannot give things for free when you have not created that wealth. Again, our principle is based on creation of wealth, whether through agriculture, whether through health as a wealth creator, whether through transport as an enabling factor in terms of production, that is what we plan to do. So that as we come to Joro, for example, we will be saying this is our plan on agriculture and this is where we want to be. So that every citizen in this county will be able to know in five years this is where we want to be. Uh, your, that answer takes us to the next segment of this debate, achieving prosperity in Nakuru County. And uh, I would like to start with what all of the candidates have said about focus on where to spend the county's money. Uh, it is estimated, Senator Njoroge, that 5.7 billion shillings out of the 13.3 billion, roughly, uh, that is uh, spent on Nakuru's budget every year, 5.7 billion goes to salaries and wages. That then denies uh, other sectors of the Nakuru economy the money, uh, including the development of Nakuru County. How would you uh, cut down on this huge expenditure that is blamed on illegal recruitment by the Public Service Board? Um, one, I, we need to understand, I need to understand when I'm in the office. Uh, why some people have not been paying revenue. Because so that is a starting point. Uh, because, you know, when we blame, we blame the, 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 the uh, all mess to salary and wages, and then we are not able to, to find out why some tycoons or other businessmen who are making a lot of money are exempted from paying revenue. Uh, which actually uh, causes the, the county government also to charge high revenue to those people who are really uh, uh, paying the revenue. I, 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 I think to me, uh, first is to put up the mechanism to know who is paying the revenue and who is not paying, so that we can have enough money collected by the county 
that will be able to will make us be able to pay the salary and also uh, be able to do the other development uh, uh, bit of it, uh, rather than uh, uh, blame 100% uh, 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 squarely to, to salary and wages. The other thing is we need also to go deeper and find out if we have ghost workers, because uh, that would be actually the, 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 the main source uh, of a uh, of, uh, problem to salary and wages. Um, that is what I'll really go into. But then again, we really, I really need to fight corruption to, uh, to, uh, to the last bit, because without that, then we'll be heading nowhere. We are losing a lot of money in the county. That is the, 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 the position. I've been at the Senate. I, 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 I know that because I've been there and I've been at the committee of the PAC. And, uh, 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 let, let me ask you, Senator, you, you, you spoke about bringing in more revenue into the, the kitty of the county. Uh, but what about, are you comfortable that 40%, over 40% of Nakuru County's budget goes to salaries and wages? Would you be comfortable with that as a governor? Yeah, with enough money, I would be comfortable. Because uh, remember, our county is very rich. We have so many uh, sources of income. Uh, this is one of the, of, the, of the county whereby we have so many uh, entries of the, of, uh, into the uh, tourism industry. And then farming is also uh, done in large number, if, if I may put it. I, I do not think that, uh, and that one now gives us a room to have the 40%, but with, with, with that collection of the revenue, uh, not letting any single penny uh, sneak um, outside the, 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 the structure of the, of the expenditure, I, I, I think uh, we, we can really make it. Dr. Koros, do you feel uh, that the expenditure pattern in Nakuru County is uh, as it should be, that is targeting what the Mwana Inchi in Nakuru County needs, with 5.7 billion going to salaries and wages, and then so little going to development? Thank you very much. Um, what we are seeing in Nakuru County is a reflection of what, is, of what the country is really. That corruption has eaten into the sectors of this great country. And therefore, as you see, 5.6 billion of, of the total revenue of 12.8 going into salaries, that's a worrying trend. And for me, I would want to ensure that I study why Nakuru County is where it is now, as far as wage bill is concerned. And you see, this is government institutions. We would not concentrate as a governor on laying off personnel. But I would want to study the genesis of all this, while at the same time, as you are all aware, as NASA government, we are promised that we will devolve 45% of the total exchequer to the counties. So that what we are saying is I would want to be sure that what goes into salaries is commensurate to the work that is done. So that if there is no work that is done, then there is no way people can be kept in the office with no work. We have to be accountable at the end of the day for the money that we receive from the national exchequer. And if that is done, then we would know as Nakuru County, the total number of workers that we need to have vis-a-vis -vis the work that is supposed to be done. And secondly, they, there is a guideline that what should go to development should be higher in terms of percentage compared to what goes to recurrent expenditure. That I would study. For you, Dr. Koros, this is not a theoretical question because you've been the county executive for finance. Now, in the last uh, four and a half years of county governments, the reality of county governments, we've seen instances where counties uh, 
surprisingly, return money to the Treasury, or money is said to have been returned to the Treasury by counties because they didn't spend it by the time they were supposed to spend it. You talk about the NASA plan to devolve up to 45% of the shareable revenue. Uh, do you feel that is the right solution, given that most of this money eventually just goes back to the Treasury anyway? Now, let me say this. If we look at the functions that are devolved to the counties and the amount of money, because in the first phase of devolution, the counties were given up to 15% of the total exchequer. 85% remained in the national government, but the functions that have been devolved are 11. And I want to say this, with that number of uh, functions, we also need to increase the amount of money or the amount of exchequer that goes to the counties. And therefore, I know when money is returned to the national treasury, that first of all is a sign of war planning. And as they say, if you don't plan, you fail to plan. That one we avoided in my tenure in Bomet, we never returned any money. We used and we wanted to use more. And I wanted to say this, that if money is planned for and used, then there is no need to worry about the total number of workers that are employed in a county government. By the way, just a minute, by the way, Every year, universities are churning out graduates. And if we are going to talk about people who are employed in Akuru County as a large number, I would want this and those who are listening to us, this audience and those who are listening to us all over the country, to go out there and find out the number of uh, uh, those who have graduated in various institutions and universities. We shall come to that issue shortly. Okay. Let us keep okay. it on the, this aspect of the Nakuru County budget. And Honorable Mutuda, I'd like to ask you this. Uh, you are very vocal in criticizing the current county government of Nakuru in terms of how they spent money. Before we come to the issue of corruption and cartels, as uh, Honorable Kinyanjui and Senator Njuroge were saying, just on the issue of the 13 billion alone, there are some people who think this is a lot of money that should not leave Nakuru County where it is today, especially if it is coming every year for four consecutive years. What is it that you think this money can do under your leadership as governor of Nakuru County if you make it? Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, 13 billion is adequate to do what we need to do. You know, as a graduate of agriculture and a former Egyptian, I know if you want to do egg production or broiler production, you don't have to call a seminar for your chicken. And so that they can know, they can, they can, they can know how to handle the eggs and then the chicks and the rest of it. All you're supposed to do is offer an enabling environment. A governor is supposed to offer an enabling environment. He's supposed to make sure that the farmers have a market for their produce. He's supposed to see that the roads are accessible. He's supposed to see that all the 14 functions are adequately covered. Nakur question is, is awful. And uh, those who was, had an advantage of being in the Senate, like my brother Jeroge, we had four senators here from Nakuru County. Oh, it's to us to tell us uh, really what happened there. But the situation, the, the books of account show that we have the 5.7 billion forever, and then we have 5 billion in bad debts which have to be sorted out together, that makes about 10.7 billion, almost the entire budget for Nakuru. And that <coughs> informed me when I took the finest accountant I could get in the land to be my deputy, so that this thing will require professionalism. The issue of these people who are not paid and they are, the banks are, deny, uh, are demanding the money, the people who have been employed, particularly those ones who bribed as much as 400,000, 500,000, to come and get the job and have had not, haven't gotten any the first salary, are far and beyond what we are discussing here in a short form. So we will need professionalism, and most of all, creating an enabling environment to make business possible for Nakuru residents. OK, but um, what exactly, where would you put the bulk of the money uh, if 
it remains at that range of 13 billion plus in, an, in, a, in a financial year. Where, do, where would you put the bulk of the money to raise Nakuru County from where it is today? Let me, for the first time, address you like Governor Mutudo, and he's in the chair. And this is what, I, what I'll do. You are paid for services you render. We borrow from US, UK, Australia, Switzerland, name it. You are not paid for just being the payroll. So you must use existing systems and software that captures the work you did. If you have 15 drivers working for the governor, only one can drive at a particular time. So why should you pay for the other 14? But if they must remain, then they must be paid for the hours they are put in. So you have a working manpower, and that is what you pay for. Number two, you negotiate with these people who are owed money by the county government. And once you negotiate with them, you have a working situation. Mr. Mbugo was not that bad. He tried. He did 453 ECDs, for instance, but was only able to commission five. So I used bulk of the money. I used bulk of the money to complete this project. He did 40 <laughs> boreholes. The time is up. Uh, let me give this chance to uh, Honorable Kenyanjui. Uh, people will expect to become governor because you're an MBA, uh, first of all, and also because you've managed uh, many businesses in your personal capacity. Uh, what would you do about this problem of uh, 5.7 billion spent only on salaries and wages in a county that gets less than 15 billion? Okay, I think the first thing is, I know my colleagues either are shy or don't understand the question, but the point is that wage bill is unsustainable. No county can run, and that is wage bill. When you look at other allowances associated with that particular cost, it's simply not sustainable. And if it is not sustainable, you have to do a skills audit. You look at the skills these people have, and see how best you can be able to use those skills to also generate wealth. And I also want to add on that. If you look at the sort of skills we've been getting in our county, some two weeks ago, we employed enforcement officers. The work of enforcement officers is to go and arrest people back there in the streets. But when you go to our hospitals, we don't have nurses. We don't have agricultural extension officers. So it's not just about the number of people we have, but the sort of skills matching them with the needs that we require to be able to make the farmer feel the county is responsive to their needs. Secondly, if you look at how we spend our money, uh, if you have a patient going to any one of our hospitals and they want to be taken by ambulance to Nairobi, they have to pay. There is no fuel. Yet, the executive has five vehicles at their disposal and they don't need to pay for anything. So we need to put our money directly to where it affects Wanjiko and the patient down there. And that is the only way we can be able to turn around this thing. So where do you think the money should go? For production related output. So if you're talking of, for example, the SME sector, we need to be able to give them places where they can be able to work give them credit so that they can be able to move on to the next level. If you're talking about agriculture, avail to them seeds, give them the technical expertise they require, give them fertilizers, and they can be able to produce more from the same parcel of land they have. And we can do the same in, in, in environment, we can do the same in education, but in short, what you're trying to say, where we should be spending our money is there. And lastly also, there must be performance-based work. There is no way people will turn to work when they want, and there are no targets. So if you're in charge of environment, for example, there must be certain targets that you must meet for you to be able to do that. If you're in charge of education, you cannot be heading the education sector in Nakuru, and when all counties are ranked, we are number 43 out of 47. You are sleeping on your job. So there must be performance contracting across the whole field so that people know their targets, and when they don't meet those targets, they have to answer then those who are there have to constantly update their skills because the world is changing. M is up, uh, but there is a common theme in the answers that all candidates have given. That is the place of agriculture in the economy of Nakuru County. Senator Njoroge, uh, Naivasha, ideally, everybody says Naivasha should have a thriving fishing industry. Uh, many think that Nakuru County should have a thriving uh, paretram sector and 
uh, the livestock sector as well. What is it that you would do to empower the, those who want to farm in Nakuru County so that Nakuru becomes number one, self-sufficient, and number two, uh, the people, the farmers can create wealth out of their land? Yeah, uh, one, let me correct uh, something before I answer that one. One, I've not been a senator for Nakuru County. I've been a senator nominated to represent persons with disability. So anything I've been uh, helping as far as Nakuru County is concerned is just a generosity. Because one, this is a county whereby uh, the senator uh, got, lo uh, got lost somewhere. Uh, and I think that is why uh, Kenodi Mbugu has been having a lot of problems. Because uh, someone to oversight him has not been uh, uh, available. Uh, he has been missing without action. So, so uh, very unfortunate for that. Uh, but I hear he's also around looking for the gubernatorial seat. Now, the other thing uh, which I would uh, put here is that, uh, one, uh, let me say in Naivasha, as far as the fishing industry is concerned, we have a lot of uh, fish, enough fish, uh, to make uh, farmers who have been harvesting fish to make uh, uh, good money. But uh, in, uh, the status they have been, they have, they have been in is, uh, is uh, an area of concern because uh, nobody has really been taking care of them. Uh, if you go to where they, they, they do, the, they, they have the market area. It's a place whereby when the rain comes, at least they have to run away so that uh, they, uh, they, they, they would uh, run away from the rain. What would you uh, do for them, sir? Uh, one, I would have a, a factory uh, built for them. That is very important. A shelter, that is. Uh, so that uh, they would be in a, in a, in a very... Uh, accommodating uh, environment. Uh, the other thing is, uh, one, I would also have a research department. One, to make sure that we have enough market for, for the fish. Uh, as, as well as, uh, you know, Naivasha also is, has been doing very well with pyrethrum. But uh, since that uh, time when uh, the market uh, was badly affected, I think nobody has ever uh, taken that initiative of reviving the market for, uh, for pyrethrum. Remember, there was a time the, the factory for pyrethrum was almost sold. I had to intervene <clears throat> while at the Senate. Thank you. Uh, we know uh, from the history of Subuki, Kureso, Injoro, and a few other uh, places in Nakuru County that these places struggle for food. Uh, what is it that you think is the problem? Uh, is it the county government or the people? And what would you do as a governor to change that situation? One, uh, you know, without a research department, a serious research department within the county, it is very difficult for us to, 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 to have the problem solved. Because one, we really need to understand our soils. And, and you know, most of our cells within uh, Nakuru County has what we call hard pan. And that is the major problem because whenever it, we have rain, most of the water uh, has a runway. And actually, we are left with no water uh, finally. There's no enough water actually to, to bring the crops up to the harvesting uh, level. Uh, uh, before the crops are, are damaged by, by the next weather, uh, depending with what kind of weather uh, uh, would be next from, uh, from the rain. And uh, I would say that uh, if we can have a research department first to take care of, the, of the, um, uh, what we call hard pan on the soil, I, I think that is the only time we'll be able to solve our problem as far as uh, food is concerned. The buzzer indicates, Dr. Koros, that it is your turn. Please tell your, those who would want to vote for you uh, how you would change this state of affairs, that the wealth that is made from the land in Nakuru County is made from basically the flower farms, but it is not wealth that stays in Nakuru County. So what is it that you would do for the small-scale farmer 
other than the big flower farm com uh, companies, what would you do for the small-scale farmer in Nakuru County to get agriculture started and going? To say this, that uh, Nakuru, in Nakuru, agriculture is the backbone of the county. And I want to say this, that the first thing, like my colleague has said, is to do thorough research. One of the key things that I would ensure as governor is to go into agriculture with a business eye so that we study, we do an in-depth analysis of the input-output uh, model so that we study what goes into agriculture vis-a-vis -vis what comes in, out of that particular agriculture. And one of the things that I would advocate for as governor is value addition. So that, for example, in areas like Kuresoi and uh, Njoro and parts of Rongai, where the soils there are good for potato growing, we would want to ensure that we do not only potato production, but we also go a little bit higher to do value addition on potatoes. So that I would advocate, instead of transporting potatoes from Kuresoi to Nakuru town. That is the end of your two minutes, but please tell us exactly, because all, all over the world, people talk about value addition. Yeah, and but um, the, the, in Kenya, people are still at the basic level of talking about enough food, just before you even add value to anything. People are still talking about just enough food from the farm to the market, because people are struggling for maize, people are struggling for potato, potatoes. That, as a few said. hours ago, yes. and if we would say there is shortage of food in Akuru, that's a lie. In Mauche, for example, we came out of that place a few hours ago, and the, pot <coughs> the potatoes are ripened. And the problem is how to transport out to market. So the first thing is, as farmers engage in production, we do a research so that we do, we ensure that once they are harvested, there is space, there is market ready for that particular produce. And in terms of value addition, what I was saying, that can be studied in terms of, instead of transporting and selling potatoes whole like that, we do value addi addition in terms of uh, coming up with a factory close by the place where they are produced. So that, instead of selling potatoes per se, we produce crisps. Thank you, Dr. Chari. I uh, hope you'll have more time to expound on your plans for the agriculture sector. But uh, unlike uh, Dr. Koros and Senator Njiroge, Honorable Mututo, you don't have the leeway, the excuse to talk about research. Because uh, Nakada became your job later, but your real passion, according to your papers, is agriculture. Sure. You've, research is, has been your life for years. Uh, you've been also chairman of the Agriculture Committee, so you know firsthand the problems of Nakuru County. What is it? What is the one magic pill you think Nakuru needs to fix the agriculture sector? Well, first of all, is to appreciate technology. Egerton has been leading in various forms of uh, agricultural technology advancement, most of them modified from such great countries like uh, Israel. And by the way, you are right. I'm international consultant on food security on Israel, retained by Israel itself. So you are right on point. Uh, I'll tell you, there is so much available for us to do. Like for instance, Egypt on here, where we are, I wish it's during the day. We have a department here which has been able to select some fish or some varieties of fish which are very potent and which are very good to market. And they are able to produce more eggs than would ordinarily be under controlled condition. If you partner now, and I'll talk about that one later with Egerton, 
and then do cage system of production like Naivasha. We can do more than like, uh, like Victoria's at the moment. It's technology. If you look at things like tomatoes, we all, we all love eating tomatoes or growing tomatoes. We are currently doing maximum of 20 tons per hectare. Israel is doing 200 acres per hectare. If you look at my brother's NASA manifesto, they are talking of some things which are rather embarrassing, the like eight acres to 13 acres of bugs per acre. <laughs> In Garana, thanks to John Mutudo, we are doing 70 bugs mm. per acre. And, uh, and, and the target for Nakuru is 120 bugs per acre. Those are the magical things. Potatoes, from the current five tons per hectare to something like 22 bags per hectare of quality potatoes. Those are the things. What would you do as governor to get one more food out of the land? I mean, to help the farmers get a lot more food out of their land. Remember, you will have at least, at first, just five years. What would you do to help the small-scale farmers get the food out of their land and also to get that food from that land to the market and to the tables of the citizens of Nakuru County and the neighboring counties? On day one, I've kept my pen down so that I can focus on him. On day one, organize the market. We who studied here know we did cut sale Pyrethrum when there was marketing board in Pyrethrum. So once you have the market rights for potatoes, Pyrethrum, name it, cheese, uh, dairy products, beef, anything you want to do, from there now, work out the infrastructure for agriculture so that the market can be achieved. And then after that one now come to the production. Don't just look at agriculture like a supply of fertilizers. It's complex. It's, uh, agriculture will require you to look at the right breeds, the right time to do certain things, certain operations, pesticide management, and so forth and so on. So it is, it is very doable in Akuru because we are favored by the weather. We have a very big population, which is a consuming population itself here, yeah, over 2.2 million. But the critical thing is to, apply, to, to appreciate universities like Hegerton, Kabete, for instance, our research institutions, Carlo, and the rest of it. And then adapt mm. those technologies through I'll give systematic... give you 30 more seconds to complete your thought. Yes. Adapt those technologies through systematic, non-corrupt system of procurement, full deployment of extension workers, full appreciation of professors at this university and other people. It is doable within six months, eight months. It's doable. The farmers are now at disarray because they only hear this quail to be produced, they all rush for the quail. But nobody has prepared them for that market for quail. They, they hear there is cabbages are in the market, they rush for the cabbages. Appreciating what is being offered in institutions like this. From 1939, you pick good ideas. Sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable Kinyanjui, do you have a clearer plan or a better plan than what your opponents have spoken about to deal with the small-scale farmer and the fishing industry in Nakuru County? Thank you. I think um, when we look at agriculture in Nakuru, it's good to appreciate every part of Nakuru from Kinongi to Lower Subukia to Rongai, Kiptagich, and Maunarok. There's no part of Nakuru that does not have a unique competitive advantage that can be taken care of. So, one, we cannot have an answer for all these areas because if you go to Kipagich, we are talking about tea and all these areas, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the general points. One is advisory services. The ordinary farmer is not a professor. He's not a master's holder. He's a, maybe a form four holder or maybe even worse. And this is a person we are entrusting to feed this country. So we must be able to strengthen advisory services so that if my cow, I think there's a symptom that I'm not able to understand, Within five minutes, I can call, and maybe on phone, I can be able to get an answer and all that. So the first thing is advisory, whether it's about the soil pH level, what crops can grow here. And I also want to say there are many other crops that can grow in Akuru and have not been introduced. And I think a good example would be avocado, among many others. So again, let's introduce more variety, and we move forward. Then secondly, is in the issue of continuous training for our farmers. An ordinary farmer in Akuru small-scale farmer, will be doing about 10 liters of milk for, per cow. Yet we know the more advanced farms here do up to 40 liters for the same cow. Again, how can we bridge this gap so that we move from 10 to maybe 20 and 25? There must be continuous training of these farmers so that we can be able to understand the value of uh, modern farming practices and all that. Thirdly is in the issue of harvesting. 
If you look at a typical crop like potato, the price fluctuates from about seven or 800, as is the case now, to about 6,000 within four months. So typically, a farmer producing potatoes now will not want to do it again because they'll actually be going at a loss. But if you had proper storage facilities, this farmer will store the crop when there's a glut, and after five or three months or so, he'll be able so to get just, the money. Just to clarify, uh, allow me this follow-up question. The, how soon after you take office, if you do, would the farmer in Nakuru and the president of Nakuru County see, for example, the advisory services in place and the storage facilities and where? Advisory services, first, I think is immediate. These workers are there, they are well trained, but they have no money for fuel, they have no money for communication, and they are grossly misused. And they would want to do their work because they are trained agricultural experts. So that one would almost be immediately. On the area of potatoes, or maybe even milk, to help them to have cooler so that they can produce more and get more out of their produce, that one, of course, together with the budget at the county, would be able to give coolers across. So harvesting is critical because if you take three months to produce a crop and then you lose it on the last day, then that definitely doesn't work. Allow me also to say we are surrounded by many regions and countries that are food deficient. If you're thinking of southern Sudan, even the Gulf region, so it is also possible to export some of these crops. And allow me also to say the big farms, including the flower farms, can do the main crop, but they also have outgrowers who can also be able to produce. And because they cannot go to those external markets, they can work through them. And a lot of that has already been happening. So what we need is to give them the advice, give them the support, and together also have targets in terms of production. And where upgrades. would the storage facilities be and how soon after you take office if you do? The storage facilities, uh, of course, it depends on what is where. If you're thinking of potato storage facilities, mainly around Keringet and towards Mount Narok. If you're thinking about milk, is again within the milk belt regions. How soon uh, after you take office? Maybe 90 days. So these Three things months. are doable, very doable indeed. <laughs> And you're some of them need not be done by the county. We also need to have private players who are working together and it's also being done elsewhere. Now, this next question, I hope I, I, I request that you answer in exactly one minute, candidates. Uh, it is a question we cannot overlook because all of you spoke about it in your introduction and in your various answers. The corruption cartels uh, in Nakuru County. The reason I want to start with you, Honorable Mututo, is because you have been quoted uh, I think a year ago, saying that the current county government of Nakuru is filled with uh, corrupt cartels and uh, thieves who loot public resources. Who exactly is in these corruption cartels? Because you are politicians, you've been for decades, uh, some of you. You should honestly know somebody you can point to and say this one. <laughs> uh, I would like to say that uh, I am aware there are maybe over 30 cases being investigated, serious fraud, serious corruption and things like that. That does not give me advantage of my colleagues to disclose what the police is investigating. But you could disclose some that they are not investigating that you know about. Uh, because you said it was very number, categorical. Number one I would wish to be investigated is the role of senators. There were four. How did they keep quiet? How did they keep quiet? Not with the studying the collective responsibility while everything was being rooted. That is corruption in itself. Because a member of parliament and a member of senate has only three functions. Number one is representing the people. The people of Nakuru have been crying from day one. Number two is oversight, straightforward to the point. And finally is registration. We may forgive them for doing only eight, eight laws. Mutudo did five when he was in parliament alone, but the whole Senate did eight. We will excuse them. But what excuse do we have when you have four senators coming from Nakuru and corruption being done just under their nose? I would have said, too, you look at the roads. There are people who are here and have had 25 roads contract and have been paid, and they are not contractor. They even don't know how Shova looks like. Those people. What would you do as governor to uh, deal with that situation? Rule of law. I said rule of law. If you are caught 
wrong-footed. It does not matter whether you are my son, you are my daughter, or like the new vocabulary that I discovered in Akuru, they are pointing girlfriends. It does not matter where, where, where you are, where you come from. But you must face the law to its full. And the good thing is that my next president, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, is going flat out to do exactly that, to follow the law to the letter. And many people will be in jail. You don't have to worry about cartels, because these cartels could be touching even the auditor's office. They could be touching the very core, the anti-corruption unit itself, the CID. It is a cartel. It is well orchestrated. Senator Njeroge, if you get to be governor of Nakuru County, you would basically be the boss. And this corruption cartels will be coming to your door, either to demand contracts, or to demand money or favors. Uh, you say you don't have any brokers in your campaign team right now, but when you get there, you'll find the existing so-called corruption cartels. What would you do to deal with them? Uh, <clears throat> one, let me put something straight here. You know, when uh, my colleague here uh, says that uh, we have been four senators in Nakuru County, one, that is not true. It just happens that we sleep. We have beds in, uh, in Nakuru County. Uh, we were not nominated by the, by the county. We were nominated by our parties oh. at that level. And uh, one, one of the senators was not actually even nominated being a resident of Nakuru. She was a resident of Muranga. So how would you deal the, with the, the other thing is, is the, the other thing, no, I just wanted to make that clear okay. because he has uh, <laughs> touched on it uh, uh, severally um, and he never answered your question in the first place. <laughs> he tried to avoid that one. Uh, and the other thing is uh, uh, Senator Mungai, who is actually our senator in Nakuru County and who has a role of an oversight. That is the person you should be looking for where he went, actually. Now, the other thing is, these cartels, uh, for sure, I don't think they would really be anywhere near uh, my county government the moment I'm elected as a governor. It was in the first place they know me. Uh, I, I, I don't think there's any room at all. Take it, my word. Uh, take, take it from me. There is no room at all. And uh, let them hear this because they are, I know they are watching the, the uh, KTN news. And uh, it, uh, it should be noted that uh, I'm also no, I've noted what uh, my brother here have said. I, I've learned that they are there. Uh, sorry for them. Too bad for them because once I take over, I'll protect the property of the resources of the county. Uh, with all my might. Uh, Dr. Koros, uh, luckily you've handled the money uh, that was meant for Bomet County, and I'm sure these so-called cartels have either called you, uh, show, shown up at uh, uh, your doorstep, or sent people to you. Could you confirm, and also please help the viewer and your voters understand, uh, these corruption cartels in the counties, how do they get that hook into the county government uh, money? And how would you deal with that? Actually, the, the issue of cartels and corruption is, is a history. Right now, as we do campaigns, if somebody relies on those cartels, they will definitely be dragged into the county government. They give you money for your campaigns. They assist you in terms of facilities. And once in office, you are supposed to help them recover their money. Okay. That's Do you think how how many of them, for example, would you be indebted to, if you if <laughs> if you got into the county government of Nakuru? Uh, how many of them, for example? If you've do been you very keen, and uh, I want this to be on record, if you've been very keen on the way I've done my campaign so far, I've done basically on my mega resources, and I want I've been doing that deliberately, but I've been. Of course, uh, applications from various quarters and peoples and individuals, but I know that one will tie me. And I want to be governor who goes into office on the basis of my Christian background, clean, clean, eh? 
Okay. And when I went to Bomet, those many cartels were there, but we weeded them out one by one. You know, I was inheriting a system that was already in place, and so I had to stand my, 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 my point, and I had to stand my ground very clearly, and refused. At the time I went to Bomet, there was you a whooping uh, debt of up to a tune of 830. <laughs> One more okay, minute. that time is up, but we, we will be coming back to you. Uh, Honorable Kenya Njui, how would you deal with corruption cartels in the Nakuru County government if you became governor? Okay, <clears throat> allow me to say that uh, cartels don't emerge when you're elected. It is a process. They will pick a candidate they think is suitable to make sure that their interests are taken care of, they will fund that candidate, and that candidate will win, or even that party for that particular matter, and when they are there, they'll be able to achieve their goals. So, in my view, personally, from the party where I am, as you probably know in Jubilee, we are relying on well wishers, not one, <laughs> not one person funding a whole party, because once they do that, as is the case with my colleague, Dr. Koros, after finally they win, that person will have an interest in the garbage collection here. They'll have an interest in uh, farming and agriculture. So even if you're a clean man like Dr. Cross, and you know up there some big tycoon has given your party 10 choppers, has given you billions of shillings, there is no way you can remain clean. So we have decided that you don't become clean. Maybe they are there. In another 30 seconds, what <laughs> your thoughts? Cartels also don't like being exposed, so what we'll also do is, of course, expose them. And if you look at the procurement processes in government, where you put it under IFMI so that everybody can be able to apply, and the beneficiaries are also made public, and you also have quotas set aside. If it's 30% for women, make sure the women get it. If it's 30% for the youth, make sure the youth get it, and you're able to follow it and do an audit of the entire process. So personally, from where I come from, I've worked in roads, I've worked in other sectors, and I believe corruption happens when it is allowed to happen. Thank you. Dr. Koros, that in 30 seconds, I see you're burning to respond to an <laughs> accusation that has been made uh, that your coalition, your alliance, uh, the alliance under which you're running, is accepting sponsorships from uh, megabucks people, people who have billions oh, to give yes, you. I, I and therefore, to... you, by extension, would be indebted whether uh -huh. you like it or not. What yeah. do you think? What, what is your response to that? I, I think. Uh... First of all, I want to say it's so unfortunate that a learned friend of mine, like the level of Honorable Lee Kinyanju, we can talk like that. <laughs> and uh, I, want, I want to say this, that I think in this debate we should separate politics from facts. And uh, I, I, I think that's far-fetched, and I regret, because uh, he, if he has traveled, if he has come to this debate with evidence, I would accept. So but, now, since there, but since there is no evidence, I, I treat that one as malice of the highest order, and I am sorry on his behalf. <laughs> okay, now in the next five minutes, because the last segment in this debate has to belong to the audience, some members of this audience will have questions for you, but we have five minutes before we get to that segment, and this uh, segment three, living and working in Nakuru. I only have one question which I'll give each one of you one minute to respond to. Uh, Nakuru County has been in the news in election years from 1992, as we saw in Molo, uh, during the, the clashes with Ford supporters. Uh, we saw Kikuyus and Kalenjin, sorry to name them, uh, killing each other in Molo. And I think 70 people were killed, according to the reports of that time, and thousands were displaced. What many young people, even in this audience, would remember is 2007 and January 27th and January 28th, 2008. At least 41 people were killed in Nakuru County because of the post-election violence. Nakuru County uh, has been referred to as cosmopolitan and multicultural. Senator Njoroge. What is it that you've done as senator, and what would you do as governor to uh, 
deal with the issue of ethnic animosity in Nakuru County? In one minute, please. Yeah, uh, one, uh, it, I've gone on record uh, putting it uh, very clear that uh, uh, this country, uh, and more so Nakuru County, is a cosmopolitan county. And it belongs, meaning, uh, saying cosmopolitan, uh, it's not a two community county. This is a 42 plus, we are waiting for Makonde to start walking into the county soon. Uh, so that we can have an additional of 41 and uh, coming to 43. Uh, and uh, I've always been uh, open to work with uh, uh, all the communities. I, me, I do not understand what Luo means to me or what Kalinjin means to me. What I deal with or what I believe is, is a human being. Uh, that is to me. And uh, I, I, uh, take it from me, I'll be very strict on that when I take over the government, because uh, it will be all inclusive. When I mean all inclusive, it will be all inclusive. Uh, watch my pace, and that is why I, I, I changed the norm of uh, having a Kalinjin, and uh, I went to Akisi uh, 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 um, a running mate. Uh, just to, 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 to put my, the record straight, that okay. I should actually work Okay, your all. time is up, Senator. Uh, Dr. Koros, what, in one minute, would you do to deal with the ethnic tension that builds up every election time in Nakuru County? Thank you very much. We already done that as NASA fraternity. I, as Kalenjin, is governor. My deputy is Kisi. Senator is Lu, a woman rep. Challenge in Luya and the rest of the communities, 43. Uh, my colleague, I wanted to make a correction. Makonde is already in Akuru. I saw one in Langalanga. <laughs> and uh, he has actually declared that the best government is the NASA government in Akuru because it is all inclusive. We have ensured that we have accommodated as much as possible all the tribes, all the communities in Akuru, as opposed to my colleagues who are just concentrating on only two tribes, and you can even see that. And then the other thing that we have done in our manifesto is to ensure that resources reaches all, all communities. All communities. Honorable Mutrudo, uh, you became MP at a very difficult time in the history of Naivasha. Uh, and it is in Naivasha where people remember the killings of 2008, January 27th and 28th. Since then, what have you done to deal with the issue of ethnic tension, specifically in Naivasha, that then would help people judge you as governor of Nakuru County? On that bad Sunday, and cameras uh, <clears throat> were roaring, so it is a fact, I stopped I stopped a possible massacre of 5,000 people, single-handedly, and How God was my side. How? I faced the people who were assailants. It is there in the videos. And I told them, stop it. There will be life tomorrow. You cannot kill these people. They are children. The fact that they are Lou was Lou here doesn't mean anything. Then, next to the police station, I had my holiday home, a nice wooden place where you come have your tea and coffee, facing, looking at Lake Naivasha. That is a compound where, when you hear there was a police station, people staying around police station. That was my compound. So those are things I would not like even to imagine. It would be interesting to note that all my staff includes all, nearly all tribes, private, privately. It would also be interesting to note, as late as last week, I sponsored Kogero to go to Dar es Salaam to go and uh, do the soccer. And the congratulations, they did very well. I watched the game. That, that is integration, social integration. All right. Uh, Honorable Kenyanjui, uh, this is your chance. Tell Kenyans in one minute, what is it that you've ever done to deal with ethnic tensions in Nakuru County that then would help them judge you as a county governor of Nakuru? Thank you. First, I think it's important to say that the tensions that come around in Nakuru in the past do not originate from Nakuru. So you cannot purport to solve those problems here at the retail level. 
they originate from a higher level. So as a governor, you must also raise yourself to be able to influence national politics so that you do not have occurrences that endanger peace here. So the, the, the issues we may have had in Molo and other places, the root cause of that problem was not Molo. So I think we need to know where to touch the button so this thing can end. And therefore, we need to elevate the debate to a national level. As a governor in Akuru County, heading to any election or any major thing that would influence cohesion and peace, we must ensure that we are always hard and ensure that our, our, our things are hard. Secondly, when it comes to appointments, you see, it is one thing to say everything is all-inclusive and those other things, but when you make a section of the community totally unheard of, unseen, and unrepresented, what you actually do is to make them actually hate you. So again, the degree to which we attempt to have an inclusive system, whether it's in way of work, whether it's in way of business, and all these things, serve a long way in terms of bringing peace, cohesion, and harmony to the communities. Thank you, candidates. You will get uh, 90 seconds each again to make your closing statements. But uh, right now, we are going to the last segment of this debate, the, uh, the segment uh, of audience asking your questions. And the first one is Ms. Grace Karuga. Grace? Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Grace Karuga, women rep candidate in Nakuru County. I'm here and I'm glad that all the candidates are here. Uh, the thing is, the global trend is to make all the major towns or counties like 24-hour economies, uh, which are not only just generates wealth, but also generates revenue. What is it that you'd like to do or make Nakuru different, either to be a 24-hour economy or a city? Thank you. Would like to take the first one, Senator? Yeah, um, one, um, you know, in a, in, a, in a county or in a town that do not have industries would not accommodate uh, anything to do with 24-hour uh, system of, uh, of uh, working. So to me, what I would do is uh, come up with industries uh, which would be uh, uh, a 24 hours uh, uh, service uh, rendering uh, uh, industries. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Koros? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the vision that we have as NASA is to make not just Nakuru County a 24 hour economy, but the entire country. That is only possible through industrialization. And in that particular way, each and every individual, we, we don't concentrate on salaried employment, but we also focus on self-employment. Uh, and we also encourage talent development so that each and every individual is active in contributing to economic, social, political, and... Uh, and, and uh, all facets of life in terms of ensuring that the economy grows. Thank in you. that way, in that way, individuals will work, some will work during the day and others will work during the night. Thank you. Honorable Mutudo. Uh, you come to the base of it. You can't have twenty four hours economy if you don't deal with the fundamentals and that is security. Security from research, from criminology, and there are graduates here of criminology here in Egerton, know that light will stop criminology to a level of 40%. Alcohol, 40%. Together, put together, is 80%. Who is more pleased than to deal with alcohol question? And with the lights coming on with the Jubilee government, it is very easy now to have a peaceful Nakuru. The other one is that to come and make small traders, popularly known as hawkers, from 7 to say 1 p.m., not invade, but have Kenyatta Avenue, Nakuru, well lit, cleaned, and they do their, where they are having electronic lights where you can see even a pin, and then from 2 a.m. up to around 4 a.m., it's cleaned up and the other businesses resume. The same can be said of Kadioki Chotara Road in Naivasha, and Salga. First of all, change the name Salga from the Salga, we know a point of death, to Salga Mujuaraha so that people can get attracted to Salga 
we come and have inadequate lighting, adequate water, and things like that. That is for sure what I will do before December of this year when I'm appointed a governor. Because these don't require even a huge budget. These are small, small budgets that the leftovers from King Mbogwa's government can be able to handle. Honorable King Njoy. I think the first thing when you want to encourage a 24-hour economy is first of all to make sure the 12 you have during the day, you make good use of it. There is no value of extending to 24 hours when there's no. So there must be productivity within 24 hours. And the first question is, how do we enhance that productivity? Second is to provide supportive infrastructure for the other 12 hours. That would include transport. There is no way you'll tell me that I'll work up to 3 a.m. and have no transport here to Joro. So supportive infrastructure, including security, including roads, including walkways, and uh, all the other things that come with that. And then thirdly is incentives. If you told people who operate at certain hours that they would pay less licenses or there would be key incentives on their part, then they are bound definitely to come. Allow me also to say with the coming of STRs to Nakuru, there is bound to be a greater attraction because some of these activities are actually night. If you don't have industries and trains and other businesses that are operating at night, you would have to find it difficult to give people a reason to do it. But if you have to connect with cargo at this time and the airport that we have been talking about in Akuru, all this uh, infrastructure will actually work towards bringing a 24-hour economy. Thank you, Honorable Kinyanjoy. Thank you, candidates. The next question will come from Francis Waitaka. Good evening. My name is Francis Waitaka. I work with, uh, in my spare time and in my faith work with an organization, the Catholic Church, uh, dealing with the straight kids and the poor and, of course, the cohesion of people. And my question is, um, when we try in the streets of Nakuru to give the street families a human condition, giving them a shower and a meal every weekend, we've noted with concern that the number is increasing. Starting from the, 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 the gateway to our town, you can see a, an army of them there waiting to be given handouts. But also in our major towns, in Naivasha, in Molo, in Gilgil, there's an increase of uh, street kids and street families. What is your strategy to arrest the situation? Senator, again, we'll start with you. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think uh, above all is to make sure that there's enough food at their homestead. That is one, because sometimes <laughs> they run away because they, they do not have thing, uh, things to eat at home. So we, come, we go back again to that question of how we would uh, work it out to make sure that uh, uh, we have enough food in the county. And uh, as I said, I think at the same time we need to have Miller so, 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 so that uh, uh, once we have um, uh, food stored, I, I, I think we can deal with street children easier in, in that easier way that, than... Uh, just giving out uh, uh, without uh, proper planning. Uh, uh, and at the same time, my government would really sit down and uh, come up with a mechanism whereby we will, we will uh, we'll have first find out why we have these children coming out from their homes uh, to, to, to the streets. But I, as I said, if they would be having enough food at home, I think they have no business uh, coming to, uh, to the streets. Dr. Cross? I, I think uh, having street children, and every time they grow in numbers, is an indication that there is no provision for them in the county government. One of the things that I would come up with is to do proper planning so that each of those, because if we talk about food security, some of those street children, it's not that they lack food in their homes but they have made that one to be a hobby. And therefore, there should be a plan, a mechanism to ensure that if they are going to be sustained there, then there should be proper planning. One of the things, that, one of the biggest problems that is facing Nakuru County is no planning at all. And I can attest to the fact that uh, no special plan has been done for Nakuru County so that these kids can be put in certain designated areas and where they are, you know, talked to, rehabilitated until they accept to go back to their homes if they have homes. And if they, are not, if they don't have homes, then they go to children's homes. 
And so I think the bottom line is planning for the entire Nakuru County. Honorable Mututo. The street children who have IDs as of a month ago were 9,413 in Nakuru alone. You take another about 4,000 who are in Ivasha and its environment, about 800 who are in Salga and so forth. It's a big, big problem. I said my agenda is social transformation and then economic empowerment. I've already done a trial and treated 30 in my state-of-the-art treatment place. 30 of the street children between November and now who have now become normal citizens. And then from here now you can do economic empowerment. But most importantly is to create job opportunities in Nakuru. The opening up our industries again, the running the 24 hours economy so the factories are running overnight so that you have more and more people employed and they can take care of their homes. So in as far as I'm concerned, this is doable. And Nakuru one is getting more complicated by the day because if you had about the, 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 what they call, the, who call themselves smart ladies, but generally you know what they do. These smart ladies are now 12,500 in this Nakuru. So together now, you put, you're having to deal with over 21,000. With this info, I know what to do. Put the, these mothers who are the major generators of these street families into working environment so that they can have their children home. And you read that one together with the treatment against addiction of substances, grew some of the big drugs, control crime so that the drug traffickers don't use them for trafficking drugs. It's doable. And we can do it within a year with cooperation of the local people. And it's not a laughing matter. It's a serious matter in Akuru, the street family question. Honorable Kinyanjui. Thank you. I think the manifestation of street children on our streets is an indicator of a collapsed social system. Because traditionally, nobody would bring a child into this world and tell them to go to the streets. So I think we need, first of all, to go to the foundational causes of why they are there. And uh, some of them are known. For example, alcoholism. Some are orphans. Some parents are irresponsible and that kind of thing. So first, we can try and address these root causes. When we are not able to address all of them, then as a county, there's a department called social services. And they're supposed to visit these homes and find where there's a problem, try and correct it because before it is too big. And when that kid can no longer fit in that environment, take that kid and take them to a county children's home that is run by the county. So that way, you'll be able to rehabilitate this child. And more often than not, they have been able to come back to the community and are reintegrated. Secondly, is to work with faith-based organizations that are already taking care of these children. And there are many of them, uh, including my friend here, that are taking care of hundreds of these children. But the problem is there is very little support, both from government at the national level and also at the county level. So again, we can work with these uh, non-governmental organizations to try and increase their capacity, to increase supervision also, because we don't want our children to go to these institutions and become hardened criminals by the time they leave there. So we also need to have standards that can be uh, uh, ensured so that the kids have as much a normal life as is possible. And of course, it's good to say that with the advent of HIV and some of these conditions that actually come and take both parents, more and more these situations are bound to come and we need to have a proactive way. And therefore, funding of the social department within the county and giving it structures would basically be able to solve the problem. Candidates, the next question to you will come from a businessman in uh, Nakuru County called Mr. Joachim Jui. Thank you, thank you, viewers. My name is Joachim Jui, and first and foremost, I would like to ask. Uh, I have heard all of the gubernatorial uh, saying that the wage bill is too high. The question is, if it's too high, how many young people have you promised that you are going to employ in the county government once you win as the governor of Nakuru County? The second thing, the second question, just the other day, just the other day, we found that the depot that was at Barnabas has been transferred to Eldoret and Kisumu. How many young people have lost their job or whatever they are earning from that depot. Because you will agree with me that, as per the statistics as we speak, 10 million of the registered voters are the young people in this country. 
Meaning that if Nakuru County we have... Okay, you'll have to log it there so that they can have time to answer you. Uh, let's start with Senator Njuroge. Uh, please, uh, if you could respond to Mr. Njuroge's questions. Yeah. Uh, one, let me say, I'm not part of the of those who say that uh, um, we should uh, lay down workers. Because you remember, I, I went on record. I said we have to look ways of looking for money so that we can have enough money. <laughs> One of it, I said, it is uh, uh, collecting uh, uh, enough l revenue. He's asking that most of you on the campaign trail have promised young people, please vote for me when I get there, I'll give you jobs. So he's asking, if already you have too many and you're using too much money to pay those too many, how is it then that you're promising to create more jobs for the youth? Where I, are they I, going? I, I, I think I said uh, um, uh, it's only that we are not able to collect uh, uh, revenue uh, in, the, in the right manner because we have cartels in, uh, within the county. If we can collect revenue, uh, in the right manner, I think uh, we need also to employ more. Because uh, without job creation, then we are giving no hope to our youths. That is one. The other thing is it's very unfortunate that the government, and I want to go on record, that they can really transfer what we have here in Nakuru and take it to uh, Eldoret and Kisumu uh, when they, ha they are not promising us anything here in Nakuru. I think uh, that is killing our economy, and uh, uh, the president needs to rethink that again. And uh, uh, the advisors, uh, beginning with the deputy president, uh, one being the beneficiary because he comes from Eldoret, I wonder whether he has sat down with, with the other beneficiaries in Kisumu to, to, to uh, make sure that uh, the project is no more in this county. I, I, I think when I get into the office, I think that is one thing that I really fight to, uh, uh, to the end, to make sure that uh, that project do not leave Nakuru County, because that is very unfortunate, and I, don't, I never expected that. Thank you. Dr. Koros? First of all, the transfer from Nakuru to Eldoret or Kisumu is violation of the Constitution. Because, first of all, there was no public participation that really asked for the views and the opinions of the public for that transfer to be uh, carried out. The other thing is, I mentioned earlier, and I think I was cut short by time, and I hope this time around you can allow me one more minute to explain my point. Universities are constantly churning out graduates from, uh, very, from various disciplines and fields. I want to say this, that when we talk of a huge wage bill in Nakuru, are we at the same time comparing with the number of graduates from Nakuru County back even here? What we need, the answer to that, and I think it's not just an answer, but it is the medicine to that is to ensure that we grow the economy of Nakuru so that we accommodate uh, as many graduates as possible. And therefore, by doing that, we reduce the rates of crime, crime in, the, in the entire uh, Nakuru County. That notwithstanding, I want to say this. In our manifesto as NASA, we have said we will devolve more resources to the counties. <laughs> And if that happens, if that happens, then there is nothing that will deny us uh, employing many, many people, and thereby reducing the social evils in the uh, in the in the society. Honourable uh, Mutwado, <clears throat> I want to agree with Joachim on the issue of youth. We are promising jobs, not one, not two, all. Read from me, all. The jobs can be categorized into two, direct employment or self-employment. I have taken time to study, and I've been there about 10 times, to study the situation in Israel. They have 13,000 millionaires who are students, billionaires, 
billionaires who are students, and 30,000 millionaires who are students. They drive some of the best cars, but they keep the spirit of education and do eight hours per week by law. There is a lot of good ideas that can be generated and financed from the youth so that they are self-employed, and we have all of them employed. There were a consortium of financing known to me now, very clearly in my mind, I'm very clear, ready to implement, so that every youth here, whether you are producing catapult, whether you are producing the, uh, the, the things, the bait for the fish, or you are doing a complex software, and talking about complex software, when I was still there my last trip, one student sold software at one to Microsoft for one billion US. That's equivalent of 100 billion shillings, a student. And he's still there, a very humble kid, trying to do his thing. So I'm promising that. On the question of Barnabas, on the question of Barnabas, if you give me half a minute. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, yes. Today, most of the day, and that's why I was late, we spent at Barnabas, at the site itself. I would encourage my, my colleagues here to make it a point to be going to the site to know exactly what's happening. And the solution will be found. We found a solution. And the next couple of days is going to be announced through a communique. And you can follow the media stories because of time. But the problem has now been solved. I was leading the pack, and I gave a play statement from Barnabas itself. Let us be action oriented. That is how it's supposed to be for a government. Honorable Kenyanjui, you have the honor of giving the last answer to an audience question before we go to the closing statement. Thank you. On the issue of employment, I think we have to find a way of making the economy bigger so that we can be able to absorb more people. When you have very high levels of inefficiency, as is the case in Akuru, the, wa the wage bill becomes a burden. But there's a manner in which you can transform it, increase efficiency, and uh, bring customer care to the county and all these other skills that are required and absorb more of the young people. Allow me to say also, you must also have an incubation hub. A lot of the young people have very good ideas. They have nobody to listen to them, nobody to experiment for them, and finally, to make it now become the big thing. So the problem in, in Kenya, and I think is a third world problem, is that a lot of the good ideas just die as ideas. They don't get to a stage where they can now become a product that can now hit the market. On the issue of uh, fuel in pipeline, I think uh, I personally identify with that area. I've been in that business for long. But uh, what probably needs to be said is that until five years ago, we did not have export business in Akuru. So we just had local, local business fuel you buy and you sell within here. Then five years ago, the government decided to bring exports here. So as a result of that, there was increased business. People build hotels, they build houses, and all the accommodating infrastructure, including petrol stations, to accommodate this. Then without any notice or any participation in the public, in one circular, that is now transferred again to Kisumu and Eldoret. As a result of that, people are left with loans. They cannot be able to service buildings that are there that can no longer be able to go on, and many people will be laid off. I want to say that uh, the minister is on top of this matter, and he has also promised to come here within next week so that he can be able to understand the challenges that are facing this area. But allow me also to correct my colleague. It is not in public interest to drag the deputy president's name in a matter that is purely at a policy level at KPC. And I'm sure he would gladly solve it once it gets to his attention. Okay, Honorable Truth, I see you're burning to say something, but uh, allow us to do it like this. You squeeze it, in, squeeze it in during your closing remarks. And this time, as we close, I would like us to start from where we are right now, then we go towards Senator Njirogi. Honorable Kenyanjui. One question, please. Uh, sorry, we're out of time, sir. But probably next time. Uh, Honorable Kenyanjui, 90 seconds, your closing remarks, please. One, I wish to thank the public, first of all, for the opportunity. This is the second time I'm running for the governor's seat. I was there in 2013, and my dream for Nakuru was simply to make devolution work. And I think the way we have reached as Kenyans, so many things are not working. We don't even want to be promised heaven. We just want to go back to normalcy. And I think that is a promise we wish to make. Secondly, the biggest challenge to any development, including the country at large, is ethnicity and corruption. 
We don't need more funds. We don't need to discover oil. All we need is to deal with these two issues. If you deal with ethnicity, so that if you're giving a job, it is to the best Kenyan, not the best Kikuyu or not the best uh, Maasai and that kind of thing. That we will have solved things. And then we cannot be talking about corruption year in, year out. And there's nobody who's been successfully prosecuted. In fact, what has been happening is if you are found to be dealing with the wrong stuff, you are transferred, and therefore you go and infect the other area. So we must also see decisive action. And I want to promise anybody who will be working in my administration must be ready to toe the line because we mean business and we want service delivery to the people of Nakuru. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Honorable Mututa, your closing remarks, 90 seconds. I want to thank both the, the media, particularly KTN Standard Group, for offering us this opportunity and welcome you twice more or thrice more. We don't fear the media like they do at Nairobi. We, are, we, we, we will be able to say, always reading from Article 118, that gives the public the right to know. Having said that, my, my social transformation agenda and economic empowerment will come along with a lot of severity and rule of law. The, the question of corridor now in Nairobi just says it all that they're still campaigning there, but they're not telling us who failed to do the public health so that we have cholera at five-star hotels. Five, the cholera in a five-star hotel is a manifest of poor leadership at the county government level in charge of health. I want to respond to the question of Banabas again and inform my, my brother here that Tururi uh, Kitel, Minister, C.S. Kitel sent a very highly powered delegation only me who showed up among these ones who are here today. And that matter is conclusively dealt with to the benefit of Nakuru people. But we wait for the minister, for the CS, to come and make his announcements tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, mm -hmm. after receiving the new memorandum, which was now being signed this evening by the transporters, hotel owners, and everybody. So Nakuru people watching this, because I know you are all there, Banabas <coughs> is now... Is, is, Banabas is actually now the only economic hub we have in Akuru. We have seen everything going apart. So, so it is not being moved? Is it's, that what you are saying? It's a policy that is not going to be moved. That's it. In fact, they are going to add another terminal for gas now as, as a gift to Nakuru people. Okay. So the audience, I'm sure they are hearing that as news from you. It seems nobody was aware. But... I'd like at this moment to thank you, candidates, uh, for showing up for this debate and keeping it real, keeping it alive, and keeping it on time. Um, oh, you, you, you have I'm reminded us. that two of you have not made your closing <laughs> you remarks. Have, you have forgotten us, eh? No. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, Dr. Kuros, please. Okay. Your 90 seconds. I, I got surprised, but I want to say this. I'm sorry, it was not intentional. It was Thank you sorry. so very much to the media house that has broadcasted this, this evening and all attendants and the entire country for giving us a platform to express our visions as gubernatorial candidates for Nakuru County. There are other issues which in my manifesto were not dealt with in this debate, like affordable medical services, which will be very key. And I'll basically concentrate on level three hospitals, which are affordable by all uh, average Kenyans. And secondly, I want to say this. I'm giving Nakuru people an opportunity to make Nakuru great again. Give me an opportunity to restore the lost glory of Nakuru in five years and by extension another five years. <laughs> Thank you so very much and God bless you and God bless Nakuru. Senator Njoroge, your chance. Yeah, uh, one, I would like to ask the Nakuru County residents not to gamble with our county during uh, the making, uh, making of the decision of who should head this county. The other thing is I think uh, we should uh, encourage uh, a governor who really needs to be hitting the nail on the top whenever issues are there. 
rather than a ding darling uh, when we have problems. Like uh, what I've just heard Kinyanjui say, trying to defend the deputy president. In such a matters, as you know, Kenyans are very intelligent. You do not expect such a project to be diverted to, other, to another county without an involvement of a certain leader within the system, unless it is a ghost thing. So therefore, I think it is always a good thing actually to pinpoint the actual problem whenever a, a problem uh, is really uh, uh, needed to be solved. The other thing is, uh, as I say, uh, I would say bye-bye cartels to county government. If I'm elected as the as uh, head of this county, because for sure, uh, I, I, I think they need to start packing, because we have to let this county economy grow. Thank you. Perfect moment to close this. Thank you, gentlemen, candidate, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen in the audience. Thank you also, viewers of KTN and KTN News. This has been the Nakuru governorship debate featuring four of the men who want to be governor of Nakuru County. Senator Paul Njoroge uh, running on a Kanu ticket. Uh, Dr. Peter Kuros running on a Chama Chama Shinani ticket. Honorable John Mututo running as an independent. And Honorable Lee Kinyanjui, the Jubilee candidate. Thank you very much. And from the Edgerton University main campus in Joro, the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, we say good night. But KTN Prime goes on with my colleague, Linda Ogutu.